Okay, so let's pretend we want this arm to go to a particular place in space, let's say like out here. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the location of this end effector measurer, as it were, so it's basically right at the end of that. Um, there is a lot of play in this system. But, and then we can read off the x, y, and z coordinates by using this little scale that we got. So, if we look on the x-axis here, it's basically just negative. So we'll call that like negative 0.2 for x. And the y, uh, the y direction is the up and down direction, so we're going to look at sort of the center line of where this is at, so we'll call that... 11 and a quarter, and then the z direction is this way, and we're going to read at the end point here, so we're going to call it negative 1.3. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to put in the desired end effector positions um, into this inverse kinematics program. Now this is going to do a guess and check for us, and then it's going to calculate the um, the different thetas, the three different thetas, by doing a uh, least squares minimization um, of the difference between the calculated position based on the theta values and the um, actual position that I want it to go to. And it cycles through a thousand times right now, but you can see it's basically already converged. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, well, now I'll let it run. When we get the theta values out of this, we're going to plug them back into a kinematics program, which is then going to move the arm to the position, and we'll see if it actually goes to the position that I want it to go to. So it is telling me that I should plug in theta 0 as 58 and theta 1 as 37 and theta 2 as 50. Um, and I do have it check for me that each of those values are okay. And then, we'll just take a look at where the end effector ends up. And so it ends up pretty close. It's not exactly the same, but um, it is at about the right height at about 11 and a half here. So that's pretty good.